Hey guys, it's Miss Adelini. Um, this is our last video on the nervous system, and this video is going to focus on synaptic transmission, which is when a signal gets sent from one nerve cell to the next across what's called a synapse, or the space between those two nerve cells. So in this image here, you're showing an axon terminal, or axon bulb, at the end of one neuron, we'll call that the presynaptic neuron because it comes before the synapse. So I'm going to label the axon terminal on the presynaptic neuron. I'll also label the space between the two neurons, the synapse or the synaptic cleft. And then on this side, we're looking at the dendrite membrane on the postsynaptic neuron. Postsynaptic meaning it comes after the synapse, and remember a dendrite is going to receive signals. Okay, so I'm going to follow step by step according to this image what is taking place in these two neurons and in the synapse. So here we're seeing the action potential that has been traveling down the presynaptic neuron reaching the axon terminal. So we're going to have positive charge um, opening this channel right here, which is shown in purple. This is a voltage-gated calcium channel. So this is step number two. The positive charge that's been flowing through the neuron as a result of Na plus coming in is going to cause that calcium channel to open, and that's going to allow calcium to enter the nerve cell. Calcium entering the axon terminal is going to cause these vesicles, which are little membrane circles containing NT or neurotransmitter particles, it's going to cause those vesicles to fuse with the axon terminal membrane and release the neurotransmitter molecules into the synapse. So those little neurotransmitter molecules are going to diffuse across the synapse until they bind to these little blue channels. Here they call them neuroreceptors. I'm going to call them ligand-gated channels. Ligand-gated channels only um, open when we have a neurotransmitter particle binding to them. A neurotransmitter is a specific type of ligand or signaling molecule. So once that specific neurotransmitter binds to the ligand-gated channel, the ligand-gated channel is going to open. And each channel will only open in response to the binding of a particular neurotransmitter. So once the neurotransmitter has bound to the channel, the channel is going to open. Usually those are going to be ligand-gated sodium channels. So once it's open, it allows sodium to rush into the postsynaptic neuron. If it allows enough sodium to rush in to bring the membrane potential to negative 55 millivolts, which is the threshold potential, that is going to cause voltage-gated sodium channels to open and begin the depolarization phase of the action potential in the postsynaptic neuron. So I want to make sure that you know the difference between a ligand-gated sodium channel, which is just on the dendrite membrane and causes sodium to enter only to bring the cell to threshold, and I want to contrast that ligand-gated channel with a voltage-gated sodium channel, which only opens when we've hit negative 55. But they do work together. It's necessary for the ligand-gated channels to open in order for the voltage-gated channels to open. Now, in our previous um, video on action potentials, we did not refer to the stimulus as a ligand-gated channel opening. Instead, we just called it a stimulus that causes positive charge to enter. But now we know that the stimulus is neurotransmitters binding to the ligand-gated channels and allowing them to open, which causes Na plus or positive charge to come into the cell. So we've gotten a little more specific in this video. 
So again, to summarize, our action potential reaches the end of the presynaptic neuron, causing these voltage-gated calcium channels to open. The calcium entering the axon terminal results in vesicles carrying neurotransmitters diffuse with the axon terminal membrane. Then we see the neurotransmitter diffuse across the synapse and bind to ligand-gated sodium channels on the dendrite membrane of the postsynaptic neuron. Once the neurotransmitter has bound to those channels, the channels open and allow Na plus to enter. If enough Na plus enters to get that postsynaptic neuron to negative, seven, negative 55 millivolts, that is the threshold value at which we're going to see the voltage-gated sodium channels open, which is going to start the action potential, specifically the depolarization phase of the action potential on the postsynaptic neuron. Lots of vocab terms. You're doing great. I will post more videos from other sources. Hope this was helpful.